Hello, and welcome to the Swansea Museum Talks. My name is uh, Phil, I'm the Education Officer at Swansea Museum, and this talk is... Um, been brought to you by Swansea Museum in conjunction with Fusion, a Welsh Assembly Government initiative. And we're going to look at uh, Swansea in the Second World War, and in particular the Blitz. Now, of course, you have to be fairly uh, uh, elderly to, uh, to remember the Blitz, and for many people who can remember it these days, uh, they were children at the time. But it had a significant effect on Swansea and uh, during this talk we'll um, look at uh, some of the pictures of how Swansea looked, um, Swansea you know, pretty much flattened and also look a bit at the uh, bit of the rebuild. We'll also look at some of the social history uh, during the Second World War and, uh, and items such as that. This is a memorial tablet to those who lost their lives in the Town Hill Ward during the Second World War and uh, probably the biggest concentration of um, lives lost was in uh, Town Hill and we'll see some we'll see some pictures related to that um, later on in the talk but it can still have um, quite an impact um, e even today and just as an example of that in uh, about six or seven years ago a gentleman phoned the museum and um, asked if there was any memorial to civilians killed in um, in Swansea and uh, I said they, you know they are listed on the war memorial on the seafront and uh, I said you know there's one or two others and he said that uh, is uh, he was looking for people killed in Town Hill and I said well yeah there will be uh, they'll be listed on a on a particular plaque the reason he was asking was he was early 70s at this point and his father who was um, late 90s had recently died and uh, he said he, you know he knew that his father was in bomber command during the second world war but like a lot of his generation didn't talk much about it and it was only when he was clearing out his father's flat that he discovered that his father had been married previously and uh, had a daughter. On the um, memorial, Eunice E. Morgan was uh, his father's first wife and Dina Morgan was his half-sister um, who was killed at the age of two um, during the Blitz and uh, he never knew anything about it. Um, his father never mentioned anything and uh, he never realised he had a half-sister who was killed in the Blitz until he was over 70 years old. But before we get to the Blitz, let's, uh, let's take a little step back in time. Uh, this is uh, a map of Swansea in 1823. And um, Swansea was just a small market town. And in 1823, even though there was a number of... Uh, uh, metal works open, opening up in the uh, lower Swansea Valley. It was still quite, you know, quite a small market town. It hadn't really expanded that much from sort of medieval time. You know, we can see the um, where the river would have run originally around the Strand, and you know, the town had kind of spread out towards what we now call the Marina and up towards what we now call the Vati. But in effect, still, you know, quite a small sort of market town. We only have to jump forward about 80 years to see images like this. Um, this is a, a view of Swansea in 1881 and uh, it's to celebrate the opening of the Prince of Wales dock, the first of three docks that would open on the east side of Swansea, what we, what we now call SA1. And we can see uh, the uh, docks of the river coming in and to the left you can see the entrance and then you can see South Dock, what we now call the marina. And you can also see where the river was redirected in 1850, 1851, down what we, they call the New Cut. And where the river used to run around the Strand was turned into what was called North Dock. And uh, North Dock was actually filled in in the um, in the 1940s with a lot of the rubble from 
from the Blitz. So this is uh, running around what we now call the sort of Park Towie area, uh, Toys R Us, Plantasia, that kind of uh, area. And of course what we see at the top is not nice clouds drifting by, but we see the pollution from all the different metalworks up the, uh, up the Swansea Valley. So the Industrial Revolution has, has kicked in now in Swansea at this point. Swansea has got a nickname of Copperopolis and they bring in copper ore from, well, from Chile at this point to, um, to be smelted in Swansea. So Swansea has quickly grown into a, into a large industrial town. Here's another interesting view of Swansea. As you can see, it's, um, it's, well, it's like a paper mache built up model of Swansea. Right on the far left, you can see Mumbles Head and then the sweep of the um, Swansea Bay around to the center of the picture, which is the Swansea town itself. And just above, you can see on the left, Town Hill, and on the right, Kilvale. But if you look underneath, it says Model Luftbild von Swansea. This is a model that was found at the end of the war in one of the um, Luftwaffe bases in France. And all the pictures that you see in this talk are uh, pretty much belong to Swansea Museum. Um, but um, this and the next image actually belong to National Archives. And uh, this was um, basically a, a, a paper mache model to train the Luftwaffe pilots with the, with the landscape so that they could um, you know, bomb more accurately. And uh, during the Second World War, precision bombing was not very, um, uh, not very accurate at all. Um, but um, what, what helped in terms of bombing Swansea was it was on the coast, much easier to find a city on the coast than, than inland. This is also from National Archives. Uh, again, this was found in the um, at the end of the war in the Luftwaffe base. And uh, as you can see, it's an aerial photograph of Swansea. Now, at the bottom, it says date flown 15th of, Fe 15th of February 1941. So this is a few days before leading up to the um, to the main three night blitz. And but. That is a reference number then put on by National Archives. But if you look at the actual writing on the photograph, on the bottom left of the photograph, you can see flight height in German, 7,800 meters. So the Luftwaffe have come over on the 15th of February and taken an aerial photograph of Swansea. Now, if you look closely, you can see dotted lines and numbers. So uh, right at the bottom of the picture, four, five, six, seven, with dotted lines around it, well, that's South Dock um, and um, what we now call the marina. And you can see all the other docks are listed. And then as you go up the valley uh, to where, you know, pretty much where the Liberty Stadium is now, is you, again, you can see dotted lines. And, uh, and these are the targets. This is the targets for the bombers. Now, if they hit those targets, um, all well and good because they're crucial to the war. Um, you know, the docks are bringing in uh, supplies from across the world, and of course, the metal industries are, are uh, a crucial war industry. So, this is what they were actually targeting. Now, uh, if they missed those targets and they dehoused the population or you know, shook morale or whatever, they'd probably see that as a victory as well. But they were they were over with, with very clear targets. Now, as we'll see um, quite soon, they missed most of those targets and uh, obviously took out most of the city centre instead. But the first thing dropped on Swansea, uh, as in a lot of other places in Britain, were propaganda leaflets, and uh, we have a few of these in the museum. Uh, this is a last appeal to reason by Adolf Hitler. It's a speech he gives before the Reichstag on the 19th of July 1940 saying well he doesn't really want to go to war with Britain and that we should make peace and uh, you know and kind of divide up Europe um, or well 
or Germany take Europe and we keep our Commonwealth, I think was his, uh, was his offer, but nobody was going to listen to him after Czechoslovakia and Poland, etc. So coming to Swansea itself, um, and uh, this is a building that survived. Um, it's now called Laser Dome, but we know it as a castle cinema. And it probably survived because it's got a flat concrete roof. But, um, we'll say more about that later. If we step in front of the castle cinema, uh, we we we're right in front of the um, the castle green, and today uh, there's a pizza restaurant at the end of uh, the, what we call the castle buildings. Uh, the castle buildings did get burnt out in the um, blitz, but um, it is one of the buildings that uh, did manage to survive and was um, was refurbished. But if we were to stand in the doorway of the pizza the place there and look across the road, this is what we would have seen. So this is Temple Street. The uh, on the on the right there, the building that you can see is clearly burned out, is um, is the old Lloyd's Bank, and um, behind it, uh, we'll see a picture of that later. Uh, would be the original David Evans store and on the left now you can well you can just see a pile of rubble um, but that basically now is of course is Castle Gardens this photograph has been taken from the post office tower or as uh, probably what we're uh, more familiar with uh, and we should call it maybe is the Evening Post Tower. There was an ARP um, sort of warden point there and they've taken this photograph from that location. So we can see across um, what would now be sort of Castle Gardens and heading down Oxford Street. And you can see a uh, in the top left hand corner it looks like an odd sort of structure and in fact that is the the burnt out remains of, uh, of Swansea Market. If the previous picture was looking straight across from the tower then this one is taken from the same spot but looking to the left of the tower and uh, we can see well, well, the remains of Kaya Street and, um, and just there in the background obviously we can see St Mary's Church uh, again a building that did survive but was completely burned out just across from St Mary's Church we can see um, some buildings and uh, of course one of those buildings originally would have had the Swansea Devil on it now, the story goes is that in the 1880s when St Mary's was being extended uh, a local architect bid for the work and he didn't get it and he was very annoyed and upset about this and uh, so the story goes is that he had the Swansea Devil carved and he owned a building opposite St Mary's Church and he put the Devil, the Swansea Devil, on the building overlooking St Mary's Church and predicted that one day he would see his devil would watch St Mary's burn and of course it came to pass so um, the Swansea devil then was, um, was, was located in the Quadrant Centre but um, you may not be aware but it's now been transferred into, uh, into Swansea Museum and you can see the Swansea devil up close now in the, uh, in the, in the, in the corridor This is just uh, another picture, uh, slightly closer, uh, of St Mary's Church, all burnt out. So back to today, um, Castle Gardens, and in the background we see uh, what um, 
many of you would probably call Sydney Heaths. I would call Treasure. Um, today, um, the youngsters would call it, um, well, it was E.H. Wine Bar. It's now changed names again, though. It's the Slug and Lettuce, I believe. So this is what's, uh, what's there now. Um, it looks like a um, Tudor building, but actually it was a Tudor reproduction bu uh, building. Um, Sydney Heath apparently was very, uh, very keen on that architecture. But of course, before that, what stood on the site was Ben Evans, the biggest department store in Wales. And this is a picture of Ben Evans taken in 1914. Uh, just at the uh, start of the First World War. Uh, it was the biggest department store in Wales. You could buy pretty much anything in, uh, in Ben Evans. And this is Ben Evans again. And of course you can see it's um, completely burning. Um, quite a significant part of it has already collapsed as you can see on the, uh, on the right of the photograph. And the firemen are there, still trying to, uh, still trying to tackle the fires. Just in the background, um, you can see St Mary's again. You can't see the damage to it because it's uh, still a lot of smoke and, um, and and rubble in the air, blocking the view of it. But uh, that's St Mary's, just in the background. This is quite an unusual picture of um, Swansea during the Blitz. It's one that's been taken at night. Uh, we don't see many um, pictures of the Blitz taken at night. I suppose if you were a civilian and you had any sense, you'd be down in a cellar or in, in your Anderson shelter or the cupboard under the stairs. Um, this has probably been taken on the third night of the Blitz. Uh, there was um, the high explosive bombs uh, which would have been dropped on Swansea, would have been, you know, cut things like the water supply. And by the third night of the uh, Blitz, the firemen were stuck for, um, for water uh, on many occasions and just couldn't do anything apart from watch the buildings burn. And so it's possible that um, they, you know, they, it's one of the firemen have taken this photograph because uh, he's, you know, he's picked up a camera because they can't get any water to even tackle the fire anyway. And these are the tail ends of incendiary bombs. So an incendiary bomb would be about you know, 18 inches long and effectively it's a fire bomb. Um, so it is estimated about 1,250 high explosive bombs were dropped on Swansea. And but in terms of incendiary or fire bombs, the estimates range from sort of 30,000 to 50,000 incendiary bombs were dropped on Swansea. And these would come down and they would pierce the roof and, 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 and the chemicals would ignite like phosphorus and uh, they would just ignite and burn the buildings out. So, and it's, it's incendiary bombs that effectively destroy Swansea. Uh, you know, the buildings like the market, St. Mary's Church, um, Ben Evans, David Evans, they're destroyed by fire bombs um, rather than high explosive bombs. And this is one of these uh, cash boxes or fireproof boxes that come out of one of the shops in the Blitz that's in the museum. And of course, these are designed to withstand fire, but. Um, you know, you look at the box and uh, it looks like it survived quite well, but you can imagine the temperature that would have been generated in those fires uh, when you see the coins that have, uh, that have been melted at the side of it. This picture is in Swansea, but um, a few of these were dropped on Swansea. They're called landmines. Uh, now this one is uh, a photograph of one that didn't go off and taken elsewhere, but um, a landmine was a huge bomb that would come down on a parachute with an altimeter setting. So it would go off maybe you know 200 meters before hitting the ground. 
and uh, it would, you know, the shock wave would completely flatten the whole sort of block of buildings. This is Temple Street. Um, uh, no, not many people probably call it Temple Street these days, but obviously Castle Gardens are there is on the right, and on the left is Zara's. Um, but let's move to uh, a picture that maybe more people would be familiar with. This is the same spot. This is um, this is so Castle Gardens again on the right, and of course this is where David Evans stood. And this picture has been taken from the same spot again. Um, so this is Temple Street, probably about um, 1920 or maybe slightly earlier, and. We can see the original David Evans on the left there and uh, on the right would now be Castle Gardens and of course looking up Temple Street uh, there would have been um, well I think it was probably knocked down in the maybe in the 70s or 80s so we see the post office tower or what um, I remember as the evening post tower so that's Temple Street in ooh, probably 1920, something like that. This again is taken from the same spot. So this is Temple Street and we can see well, on the left, most of David Evans has already collapsed. Uh, to the right, you can see what remains of a few buildings. But um, again, that would now be Castle Square and looking up the road. Uh, just again because there's so much rubble and smoke still in the air you can uh, just about make out the evening post uh, tower. This is um, a picture that was that's taken down towards what was the old Swansea hospital and um, the uh, you can see a big crater there, so which will indicate that this was a high explosive bomb rather than a um, incendiary bomb. Uh, the tragedy here was is that um, a bomb disposal officer had gone down to the Swansea Hospital uh, to get treatment for a minor wound when he, he got the shout for an unexploded bomb just round the corner. And uh, unfortunately, he was killed trying to defuse this particular bomb. Uh, a few other bomb disposal officers were killed on High Street to try to tackle another unexploded bomb there. This is High Street and Castle Street before the war, sort of bustling shopping area in the 1930s. Uh, you can see, still see the tram lines there as well, um, with carts, cars, bikes, pedestrians. And uh, just to the left, we have Woolworths. Um, now, this is what we're, where Argos is now, uh, just at the bottom of High Street. And then uh, as you look uh, towards uh, sort of um, Castle Street, you can see Ben Evans there in the sort of middle, uh, the big department store. This picture is the same area, it's taken a bit further down, so we're on Castle Street rather than High Street, but um, you can see the, um, again, you can see the damage um, to, uh, to Ben Evans. And just on the left is what we call the Castle Buildings. And it's difficult to see, but it, you can just about make out that, they, um, that they're actually um, burned out there. Something slightly different. Uh, this is a painting by Will Evans, and uh, it captures the uh, grand old entrance to Swansea Market. So, um, which um, the new market is located in the same position. So we're at, we're on Oxford Street here, looking down again towards Castle Gardens, and um, Will Evans was an artist and. Uh, he um, painted a number of images of Swansea um, during the Blitz, and we'll, we'll, we'll see a few more of those later.
So if you were to step through that entranceway and into the market itself, this is what you would have been seeing. So this is the interior of Swansea Market. As you can see, it's completely burnt out. Um, it couldn't be salvaged. The heat had damaged the, um, you know, the metal structure. Um, and, it, and again, you can see there's no, there's no bomb craters in there. It's um, the Swansea Market has been burnt out by by incendiary bombs. And this is one of the pictures that um, gives you a sense of scale of the um, destruction of the uh, town centre. And we're actually looking down um, the Kingsway on our right year. It was called Gower Street in those days. And if we had gone from what I call Top Woolies at the bottom of High Street, um, you would have gone across College Street to where sort of Kingsway roundabout is now and then carried on going down the Kingsway and each side of that was completely flattened. The first building to survive you can see just on the right there is Mount Pleasant Baptist Church and the building sort of kind of sticking out of the top there is actually the um, Plaza Cinema, uh, now the site of um, the Audion or Oceana. Um, I say site of Oceana, that's been knocked down as well now. Um, and then as you look to the left, then you were looking down the top end of um, top end of Oxford Street. So it gives you a real kind of sense of, um, of the scale of the, uh, of the destruction. So if a, if a town or a city takes a heavy bombing raid, then Winston Churchill would come down to pay a sort of morale boost in visit. Um, and um, this is Winston Churchill. He's walking down St. Helens Road here towards, the, um, towards Swansea Hospital. And uh, he's doing that sort of trick where he used to sort of um, spin his bowler hat on his, uh, on his walking stick or, uh, or brolly. Um, story goes is uh, that um, when Winston Churchill drove into Swansea, he was in an open top car and um, somebody shouts out to him, where's your gas mask? Because of course you have to have a gas mask on you at all time, a legal requirement. And apparently Winston Churchill just reached under the seat of the car and pulled out a gas mask. And we don't know whether or not that's actually a true story or a Swansea urban myth. Who knows? So this is an aerial photograph of Swansea now and uh, this is the town centre after the clearance and you can see the huge empty spaces. So a lot of this rubble has been taken away and quite a bit of it has been dumped in the North Dock to fill in the North Dock which was uh, not being used by this stage. And if we, uh, if we look at it you can see on the right bottom corner you can see the castle buildings so therefore, if you kind of run from the corner of the castle buildings, the bottom right castle corners, across the road, then you're going down Oxford Street there. So the patch on the bottom right is now Castle Gardens, and then you go down Oxford Street. And you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see it, well, it looks like um, uh, shipping containers lined up. And of course, what that is is Swansea Market which was an open market all the way through the sort of low, late 40s and 50s until they eventually built and opened the new market that we're familiar with today in uh, 1960. And then of course running parallel then on the next road up that you can see is what is now the Kingsway and uh, you can just see the you know the as you were looking down that road you can see the first kind of surviving building was the um mount pleasant baptist church kind of towards the left of the center of the uh, of the picture so a huge area of um the center of swansea had to be cleared And of course there we, um, we see a picture of the rebuild. So 
Um, this is the um, area that Ben Evans, the department store, did occupy. And we can see in this picture, we can see Castle Gardens. Uh, well, as people like to remember it, with the evening post offices and the evening post tower in the background there. And just on the right, that is Sydney Heaths being built. So, of course, Ben Evans did um, continue for a while. They, um, they had a small shop on Walters Road uh, for a while. Again, part of the rebuild. So this is um, the Kingsway roundabout. Um, prior to the uh, building of the um, Dragon Hotel. This is Princess Way. So this is uh, the 1960s now. And um, of course, in, in terms of rebuilding Swansea, if you were rebuilding a town centre in the sort of 50s and 60s, um, course one of the things you would have done is widen the roads because of the growing sort of lorries and um, car uh, transport and we can see David Evans rebuilt there the corner of Castle Gardens and across, across the way um, Boots the Chemist which of course is now McDonald's. So a couple of pictures of the like social history um, it was an offence not to carry a gas mask at all times, so you would have had gas mask drills in schools. And uh, you can see one going on here. Uh, difficult to see the, but all the children there are wearing gas masks as well as the uh, as well as the teacher. Um, looks like he's doing the alphabet on the on the board there. And I really like this advert. This is for Clevedon College, which was in the Uplands. And uh, this is an advert that was carried in the Evening Post on the 5th of January, 1941. It says, secondary education with individual attention for every boy and girl. And it advertises meals, sports, air raid shelters. Which was just as well, because this is a picture of Deneva School in the town centre. Um, it was repaired and used again as a school until uh, recent years. Um, but uh, Deneva School was uh, a building that was burnt out and one of the few buildings that they were able to, uh, to salvage. Of course, there was rationing of food and clothes. And um, as you can see in a picture here, bird's egg powder. Getting fresh eggs was very difficult, and um, many people had to put up with some uh, these powdered eggs. Rationing continued, you know, until until the mid fifties. One of the last things um, to uh, end rationing was sweets. So some people would have been in um, school at this point, and. Uh, uh, if you were, you might have been involved in this, Dig for Victory. So lots of school playgrounds were dug up and uh, turned into vegetable patches and the children were involved in growing food. And of course, clothes were rationed as well. So, um, so we have uh, utility. Uh, utility clothes, utility furniture. Um, it's very collectible now, so if you still have any anything with a utility label on, don't throw it away. And of course, some people might have been evacuated. So uh, here we see um, children um, evacuated to uh, to other areas. Um, my mother was evacuated to Astragan Lice and um, I remember her telling me that uh, even from Astragan Lice you could see Swansea burning and, uh, and hear it and it's very difficult to imagine these days but um, she would say that 
you know, obviously there was the three night blitz, but there was a series of raids over Swansea, and of course, you know, they would know about it in um, in Astragunlais, and she said that it would take three or four days for a letter to arrive, you know, for for her to know whether her parents were still alive. Um, so when they did come and visit, she cried so much that um, they took her back to Swansea. Um, so she arrived back in Swansea just in time for the three night blitz. And this is a, an interesting document. It, uh, this, this actually is from West Glamorgan Archives rather than a museum. Uh, and it's a list of evacuees at Brunavrid School. Now this is Brunavrid at Britain Ferry, not Brunavrid Swansea. And uh, it gives the name of the child and uh, the date of birth, their present address and their evacuated address. And uh, if we look at it, you know, we can see that um, if, you know, there's a, one or two from Town Hill. Uh, there's a few from East London, which of course is the first area that got bombed in, uh, in Britain. But the curious one is is, the, is is if you go down the list and you've got um, a name, uh, Jeanette Keane, and it looks like... Stuart Dacia, and it's got a present address, but when you look at the evacuated address, it just says Jersey Channel Islands. Now we don't know, but um, it, it kind of makes you think that these children uh, who were really young might have just been put on a, one of the last boats off Jersey or Channel Islands before, of course, they, um, they were occupied and uh, they were put on a boat to the mainland. But you can imagine that it would have been um, very difficult for you know, young mothers at the time to decide what to do. Um, they were encouraged to move out of the bomb cities, but of course, some of them, you know, found it, you know, very difficult. They might have had uh, other caring duties or whatever to, you know, parents to look after. So, so many um, mothers and young children stayed. This is um, really interesting sort of photograph from the time. Uh, these uh, nurses practicing using the baby uh, respirators. Uh, so these are baby gas masks and uh, they're actual babies inside them. Um, of course, it was a considerable um, time of social change for women as well. Um, so brought new experiences for women and uh, this photograph uh, was in the Evening Post in uh, 1941 and they were just uh, they were just doing a story on a family in Chemical Road, Morriston. Uh, I think they had four daughters, all of them in all different sort of uniforms. So, so many women joining you know, various kinds of services. And of course, a lot of women worked in uh, munitions factories. So uh, this is a, a photograph of a woman. This isn't uh, in Swansea. This is a woman and she's finishing off the wiring in a Lancaster bomber here. And of course, there was a lot of um, women on the production lines. And uh, you can see these groups of women are uh, producing what are obviously Sten guns. Um, Something we are again. We have a sort of deactivated Sten gun in the uh, in the museum collection. Over seventy women, thousand women joined the Land Army to help produce more food in Britain. So, milking cows at four thirty in the morning. And over 20,000 women went back to America as uh, GI brides. So you can see your, um, a dance for the Americans. Um, the 20,000, I should add, is uh, the total for the UK, not for Swansea. 
This is um, Tyler Crescent in May Hill. Um, it was hit during the um, during the Blitz, and about 40 people lost their lives in this particular um, attack. Um, this is one of the houses that was hit when a string of bombs came down Tyler Crescent. And this gives you another indication. You can see the um, the bomb damage running down Tyler Crescent here. And it was a, it was a street running parallel to Tyler Crescent that um, the Dina Morgan, uh, the two year old half sister of the gentleman I mentioned at the start, was killed. So many people would have had one of these in their back garden. Uh, this is an Anderson shelter. And if you didn't have an Anderson shelter, you might have had one of these. Uh, so no Anderson shelter or no cupboard under the stairs, then you could have a Morrison shelter, uh, which um, we see a picture of here. A lot of the best architecture that um, survives in Swansea now is probably the bottom of Wine Street, which we can just see on the right here in this photograph. And then this is the what we call the Museum Green now, where we can see the old harbour offices, uh, which is now Morgan's Hotel. Um, the Evening Post building there. Uh, just to the right of that is the, um, the old assembly rooms and exchange and uh, over on the right we can see Swansea Museum, of course the oldest museum in Wales. The museum luckily survived, a bomb did come through the, um, the roof uh, into the gallery, a high explosive bomb, but luckily didn't go off. Um, so, but um, this is where, and just around the streets here, we've got sort of Georgian houses, and uh, this is probably the, um, the best architecture that survived in Swansea. Uh, of course, during the rebuild, it was, well, it was at a time where the country was broke and um, planning restrictions weren't, um, you know, that uh, restrictive. So today, where we see the Evening Post building there, that would never be allowed today and uh, I suppose when it's gone there's, there's no way they're going to allow uh, something like that to be built in this in this particular rebuilt in that spot but of course it was you know uh, the country was broke um, the city centre needed re rebuilding uh, a lot of people um, say that if you go to Plymouth Plymouth suffered a similar fate uh, the town centre was very much destroyed and if you go to Plymouth you'll see a city centre very similar to uh, to Swansea. Many uh, many of the women uh, will probably remember this gentleman. It's Mr. Langley. He owned a series of uh, uh, hairdressers in Swansea and uh, uh, a hairdressing school as well. This photograph was taken during the war. This is uh, Mr. Langley and. Uh, He's remodeling this uh, woman's hair into a Spitfire. Um, just a bit of sort of uh, kind of um, morale boosting sort of propaganda. And, um, and this was picked up by the Evening Post and then quite a number of the national papers picked it up as well. So uh, there's Mr. Langley. Now, interestingly, um, the family has given um, quite a lot of photographs to the museum and objects uh, several years ago and it included this particular newspaper cutting. Now this newspaper cutting was actually picked up by a German newspaper and at the end of the war um, Mr Langley a few months after the end of the war got a package through the post from Germany from a fellow hairdresser who had cut out this um, newspaper cutting so in this particular newspaper, they reproduced this um, photograph of Mr. Langley uh, in the German newspaper in 1944, saying this is Mr. Langley of Swansea. Uh, he's doing his bit to boost morale. And um, 
kind of roughly translated goes on to say that you know once the war's over and Germany have won you know the Gestapo will be having a word with Mr Mr Langley and then the other side of the uh, newspaper um, is another interesting image it goes on to say um, Mr Langley is from Swansea this is a, a rough translation of German here uh, Swansea is a bit of a dump and here's the evidence uh, you can see the top picture there you know it looks a bit odd because it's a panoramic view but it is in fact Neath Road and that is the old Swansea Canal when you know a picture of it's still there the big building you can see slightly to the left is the Mexico Fountain and if you look up to the right, right to the top, you can just about make out there's the viaduct, the railway viaduct bridge going over the uh, going over the the canal and the River Towie. So um, Swansea is a you know bit of a dump, and underneath there you can see the new Swansea. This is how uh, after at the end of the war when uh, Germany's won, this is how Swansea's going to be rebuilt. So there we have it. Um, so anybody who uh, complains about the uh, rebuilding of Swansea Town Centre, well, don't forget, there were other alternatives on offer. We'll just finish with Will Evans. Now he was an artist and he was living on Mount Pleasant and uh, he did a series of paintings um, uh, quite a lot of the original uh, paintings are in the Glenvigan Art Gallery and uh, this is a picture that he's um, actually um, painted probably from his front garden or maybe from a from a bedroom window um, looking down from Mount Pleasant where he lived across the town centre and again we can see the castle buildings there and all the uh, all the rubble around and this painting is kind of takes us back to the start of the pictures of war damage we're back outside the castle buildings and Peaster Express and we're looking down the uh, Temple Street and the building only right there is the uh, Lloyds Bank which was destroyed and behind that the original David Evans um, so this is uh, back to where we started in terms of photographs of the actual war damage and we'll just finish with this picture and um, this is Will Evans again but this is a painting from the 1930s and it's a painting uh, of um, a square round the back uh, by uh, St Mary's Church and he's um, he's painted the sort of like back streets if you like of Swansea um, in that area with a bit of artistic license it has to be said in terms of the castle there um, but um, he's, he's, he's given us a nice image of what the back streets of Swansea in that area looked like um, you know how, how sort of quaint they were and um, it gives us an idea of you know the kind of um, architecture and what we lost um, during the Swansea Blitz thank you very much mm -hmm.